I'm Ron Richmond. Uh, I'm an artist. I live here in Mount Pleasant, Utah. I've been doing art for about 18 years full time and uh, it's something I always wanted to do since I was just a kid so I feel like in a way I'm living my dream. To try and make a living as an artist you have to be fairly independent and thick-skinned because everyone all through your life is telling you that you it's too hard to be an artist, you can't make it, your family, parents, siblings, uh, they try and encourage you to do something else. I even had professors say, if you can think about doing anything else, if you can picture yourself doing anything else, do it. But if you can't, then try and make it work. And I probably thought about some other things, but I just kept coming back to art because that's what I wanted to do since I was younger. I guess the bottom line is I don't do it just to try and be independent. It's just something that's been in me all my life and it, I can't imagine myself doing anything else but art. I come from pioneer stock here in Utah. Some of my ancestors settled Utah, but I'm drawn to this area. I love the people here, although sometimes I feel like a fish out of water. Sometimes you say you're an artist and people kind of look at you funny, like they have no idea what that means. And they're wondering which field of farming is artist. One of the most common questions an artist will get is where the inspiration comes from, and it never comes from the same source. Uh, every time it comes from all different kinds of places. But one, th one pattern I have noticed for sure is that I get inspired for the next, say, three or four paintings when I'm working on one painting. I'll be working at the easel, and by working on that painting, I will get an idea for the next three or four. The hardest thing is when you sit in front of a blank canvas, sort of like a writer sits in front of a blank piece of paper, a typewriter, or I guess these days a blank screen and a computer, and it's hard to get started. But once you get started and the ideas start rolling, Usually the best source of inspiration is work. More specifically, I get inspiration from things I read, uh, from questions I have about life. I also like to think about what makes people tick because I guess I know sort of what drives me and what, what makes, uh, gives my life meaning and I'm always curious about what gives their life meaning. And I think uh, I draw inspiration from things, questions like that. Uh, when I was in school, I loved to paint landscape and I still, I love the landscape. I love being outdoors. But as I was in college, I started thinking I wanted my paintings to be about more than just pretty pictures. And so I started altering the landscapes and maybe abstracting them would be one way of putting it. So I started changing the landscapes, putting man-made things in the landscape or changing the landscape to look like it had been altered by man or something. And from there I just slowly evolved to where they weren't even landscapes anymore or I would put objects that weren't normally in a landscape like a chair or the landscape would look like a checkerboard or something like that. And it slowly evolved to where now the landscape, if it's in the painting, is a very minor part of the painting and the object or objects in the foreground, uh, that's the focus of the painting. That's what I want, uh, to be the, want the painting to be about. Sometimes I've even eliminated the, the landscape to where now they're just still lifes, interior scenes or, or uh, things sitting on a table. So I've made sort of this full journey of uh, from landscape to an altered landscape to still life and now I've even been including more figures in the painting so uh, hands or, or people in the paintings with the still life. I often will put something that seems like it's out of context in other words they don't really make sense in our natural world. I'm always interested in getting people to see the work and ask questions. Some people don't uh, want to spend time with my paintings or a, with a painting or a work of art that makes them think or makes them stop and, and, and wonder what it's about. I guess in a way I'm, I'm after those people who want to take the effort to uh, wonder and ask themselves why this is this way. In the last year I've been doing a series of paintings where uh, I've been combining still life with a human figure, sometimes live figures, but sometimes figures that are in other paintings. In other words, I'll use a painting from an old master and I'll paint that in the background of my painting as if a still life, a table with some bowls or a glass vase is sitting in front of say a Titian or a Botticelli or some other painting in the background. I have really enjoyed this series. It's a way of paying homage to the old masters because I get to copy part of their painting in the background of my painting and then at the same time I, I make it my own by putting something in front or some kind of still life object or an interior space where this painting would be shown.
For the most part on the larger paintings, I paint on canvas. I also on a lot of the smaller paintings use a board or a wood panel, which is nice because you can sand it, you can scrape it, you can be a little rough with that wood panel and, and you can get a little different look and a surface with those wood panels that you can't get with a stretched canvas. On the stretched canvas you have to be a little more careful so that you don't uh, ruin the canvas or poke a hole in it. So I like both. Uh, I like both methods and they both offer a different kind of challenge in the end. I usually tone the white gessoed canvas with a, a wash, a turpentine wash with some color in it so that I'm not just starting on a blank white canvas when I actually start to paint or draw. Sometimes I'll draw actually before I do that but one way or another I'll put that wash over the canvas and uh, if you've ever had a blank piece of paper, sometimes that's the hardest thing to get started on. But if you, if you have something there, some kind of a wash or a pattern or a color, uh, you can work against that and it gives you something other than just a bright white canvas. When I start with a turpentine or a mineral spirit wash, it gives me a middle value, uh, not black, not white, but right in between, kind of a middle gray. And that's helpful too because then you can work both directions on that. You can push your darks darker and your lights lighter and the, the tone of the canvas becomes your middle tones and it's a good way to, to start out. I often paint in layers uh, so I'll start the first layer pretty loose and uh, with a lot of energy and, and fast and soft edges and as I progress through each layer of the painting I get a little more detailed, a little more in focus and a little more refined but still trying to keep some of that freshness and uh, the loose edges and, and the quick uh, gestural strokes of the first layer or two. Sometimes you can kill a painting by, uh, by overdoing it and losing some of the freshness that you get in the first layer or two. So I like to try to, uh, as I work through those layers in the painting, get more refined in certain areas of the painting, maybe where the focus is going to be, but leave some of the outer edges loose and, and out of focus and unrefined. I find that gives the paintings a little more variety so that there's a different degrees of finish throughout the painting. It also draws the eye into the middle of the painting if, if around the edges the painting isn't as focused or refined and then as the middle part of the focus is, is a more refined and more layers and more detail, it draws the viewer's eye into that part of the painting. Another question that I have and I think all artists have is when is a work of art finished, when is a painting finished? There's no set formula. People often ask me, uh, when will you be done with that painting? I don't know uh, is the answer because I don't know when it's going to be finished. It could be a week from now. I could work a whole week on a painting and still not be finished. Or all of a sudden I could do just a few things to it tonight and it would be finished. And it would just, you just sort of have to listen to it and let the work of art speak to you, if that doesn't sound too strange, and be in tune with when it's finished because you certainly can overpaint a painting if you if you just aren't paying attention uh, you can ruin it by going too far so when is a painting finished I never know until it just sort of happens I hope that I hope that my paintings uh, evoke questions that people might ask themselves the same kind of questions when they look at my work um, hopefully they they ask a question what is the painting about but maybe they'll they'll start thinking about other questions like what uh, what is life about or is there meaning to all this <laughs> or are we just uh, kind of by chance stuck here on this planet somehow and I don't know those those things intrigue me so I uh, some of those things uh, inspire me to to paint I'm Ron Richmond and I'm an artist. <laughs>